I honestly believe that is the best thing you can do for your um, health, for your stress management, for Hey friends, everything. Melissa from Melissa vs. Fibromyalgia here and we are going to talk about one of my favorite topics ever. I am passionate about sharing all of the tools in my toolkit that help me to manage chronic pain, fatigue, insomnia as well as possible because I want you to build your toolkit as fast as possible so that you can experience a relief as soon as possible. Yoga Nidra is my absolute favorite tool ever and we're going to get into all of the nitty gritty about it now. So Yoga Nidra is known as yogic sleep. So the brain waves uh, during Yoga Nidra mimic those in sleep, specifically the deeper restful stages. And it is actually the only way for us to, um, some of us, to access those deeper stages. For some of us, we don't get there during normal sleep. Now there's a common belief that a yoga nidra practice can feel like three hours of sleep because it is just that restorative. So yoga nidra is a meditation, it's a guided meditation and you do it in a completely relaxed state. So I encourage you to do it on your bed with your electric heating pad, uh, with an eye mask if that makes you feel comfortable, but do it in the most comfortable way possible because we want to teach our body that we can relax fully. So some parts of the meditation, um, normal meditations or any other one you might have experienced do take place in Yoga Nidra, um, but it has a specific sequence and um, there is a specific process to it. So you tend to begin with getting as comfortable as possible and then grounding into the moment and we focus on sounds and our breath and our body. Then we tend to set an intention or a sankalpa and so that's an important part of it. It's a positive present tense statement and it's what resonates with us and we keep it until we see fruition. Uh, an example of this is I like to use the sankalpa I am well physically, spiritually, emotionally uh, but it's what works for you and there are a lot of practices that can guide you to make your sankalpa as well. You then tend to move through a body scan meditation. So that's acknowledging every single part of your body. Uh, there's different ways to do it uh, and they will differ from teacher to teacher and practice to practice. We also spend time witnessing thoughts and um, opposing sensations and um, opposites. So for example, we might play with hot and cold, and then we play with balancing the hot and the cold uh, at the same time. And there is a period near the end where you're able to kind of just rest in the moment. And this is my favorite part. So by this point, I tend to be quite relaxed. Sometimes the pain makes it difficult to relax into it, but by this point, the tension is usually released and I'm usually relaxed and you're able to just float in the moment. And it's a profoundly relaxing moment. Your mind is calm, your body is calm. And for someone with a lot of sensation and with a loud body, um, it's, just a relief. It is a real relief. Uh, and at this point for experienced meditators, uh, it can feel like you're asleep. But if you wake up as soon as the um, teacher guides you out, then you are not asleep. You are in deep meditation. But if you fall asleep, it was probably what your body needed and what I believe is a really important um, opportunity for Nidra for us. So it's important here to note that a lot of teachers will set the intention or ask you to set the intention to remain awake and aware. Uh, but again, I believe it's really important for us to get rest however we can get it. So uh, maybe disregard that intention if the teacher you listens to um, suggests that or just see how it goes. Just be really open to it. Um, a theory about fibromyalgia is that the sympathetic nervous system, that fight or flight response, is stuck in overdrive. And meditation promotes a calming of the system. So it switches on the uh, parasympathetic nervous system. So the opposite, which is the rest and digest response, which is something that's very difficult for us to access. Yoga Nidra takes those benefits of normal meditation and takes it a step further. Uh, so some of the benefits uh, that we can get from Yoga Nidra, from consistent practice, is helping with insomnia, calming the central nervous system, could improve the immune system, help with depression and anxiety and stress, and it can reduce pain and fatigue. 
So after a 20 minute session, my pain levels can actually drop quite low and my fatigue levels can also drop. And so the effects help me get through. It is a proper rest break. It is an efficient rest break. And I talk about that a lot when I talk about pacing and I um, address it in my pacing training. We need efficient rest and yoga nidra is the best way to do that for me. Um, but it's not always easy to get the time to do it, but I do really try to prioritize it because it makes me feel that good. But in terms of when you can practice yoga nidra, you can do it first thing in the morning if you don't feel like you've slept well, which is probably most of the time. Uh, during a flare is a really good time to do it. So if I'm not feeling well, I will take my medicine, turn on my electric heating pad and do a yoga nidra. Uh, use it in place of a rest or a nap, particularly if you wish you could nap but you can't. Um, after work, so right after work, before you um, get on with the evening, uh, maybe if you need to de-stress or take time to calm down, you can do it right before bed during the night. So for example, if you're stuck awake, maybe pain insomnia or just normal insomnia, you can do it then. But basically whenever suits you, as long as you can fully relax into it. So Kamini um, Desai, in her book, Yoga Nidra, The Art of Transformational Sleep, uh, I have way too many sections in that book highlighted, but one um, quote that I really love from that book says, using yoga nidra as a nap is like using a jet plane to drive to the grocery store. You can do it, but it's a gross underutilization of its potential. This book talks a lot about using yoga nidra to initiate the relaxation response and its positive effects on our bodies, of which, you know, they're numerous. Um, it helps us to reset the sympathetic um, dominance and um, on the section of the benefits of yoga nidra for us, it goes through the different neurotransmitters and chemicals in our brains. But they, uh, they refer specifically to fibromyalgia in one quote. Yoga nidra as meditation increases the brain's production of serotonin. Low serotonin can be related to depression, anxiety, bipolar disorder, apathy, low self-esteem, obesity, insomnia, migraine headaches, premenstrual syndrome, and fibromyalgia. How many people with our syndromes don't have at least two of the above things in that list? A paper from 2020 on the effectiveness of yoga nidra states, empirical studies on yoga nidra confirm positive effects on various physiological and psychological criteria, such as insomnia, addictive behavior, chronic diseases, pain therapy, pregnancies, geriatrics, asthma, as well as disorders of the cardiovascular system. So not only based on self-reports, but also by imaging techniques, such as um, PET scans and EEG scans. So they show that sustained changes in the activation of the brain were actually recorded, right? So personal experience plus visible brain scans. Um, the research is still limited, but it is showing what I have experienced. So basically it helps calm our central nervous system, which if you've read any of my work, um, read my books, um, done any of my programs, you'll know that's really, really important. So my experience with Yoga Nidra is it took me a while to appreciate meditation, actually years, because when I first started improving, I was able to start reading again, and I was really reluctant to give up my reading time. But in 2014, I read a book about mindfulness meditation. I found a YouTube video. Um, it was a Yoga Nidra session, uh, and I just fell in love. It just made me feel so relaxed in the first um, session and for the first time ever I felt relaxed. Um, so now I do various types of meditations but pretty much always yoga nidra. I practice basically every day. If I can't practice it's not my choice. Um, it will be somebody else you know, not letting me like a child, um, but when I need it, I use it and it helps me to get that efficient rest that I need to manage for children, chronic symptoms and all of the things. When I was pregnant and desperately sore and tired, it really made a big difference to my quality of life. Uh, and sometimes I would catch five or 10 minutes of like a nap when it finished and that really, really helped. The benefits of meditation have pervaded all facets of my life. Um, I no longer get anxious without due cause. I can feel profoundly calmed by the fact that I can get deep rest. So I don't need to worry about the fact that I don't sleep well or that it's difficult to rest, which is actually really big. That's a big thing for us. Um, and it helps me to get to sleep and um, helps me with flares. It helps me with so many things. 
um, I love it so much that in 2021 I completed my 200 hour meditation teacher training program. I've completed a couple of yoga nidra specific programs. I've read loads of books and practiced, like I said, almost every day. Um, it's my dream and my pleasure to share these tools with people because it's so important. So when I first start mentoring other people, I tend to suggest starting with yoga nidra because it doesn't require energy or mobility and it doesn't require you to be flat free. Um, so actually it'll help with those things as well. It will help um, restore energy and help to build mobility uh, by getting the profound rest. You can then move on to the other tools that yoga offers. Um, so it is basically my favorite tool for that. So getting started, I tend not to talk about um, the theory. I tend to prefer to suggest people experience it because we are so in need of rest that I would rather you use 10, 15, 20 minutes of your time to rest and to do the Nidra than to talk about the Nidra. But um, I have several um, classes you can try now. So this is um, supplemental. But what you really need to do is just try it. So I've got a couple of free ones on YouTube. I have a whole program about Yoga Nidra. Um, this video is included in the program because theory is important. Once you get to the point of practicing, it's good to know why you're doing it and how it can help you. Um, I just can't talk highly enough about it. When you've got an illness like fibromyalgia, a tool for deep rest belongs in our toolkit. Homework. Try Yoga Nidra. Try it. Try it every day for the next month. Uh, when people join my studio, Yoga for the Chronic Life, if nothing else, for three, six, nine, or 12 months, I recommend doing Yoga Nidra every day, and that will give the return on investment for the program. I honestly believe that is the best thing you can do for your um, health, for your stress management, for everything. So give it a go, and then let me know how it goes for you. Mm -hmm.